Okay, today's notes are going to be on cell transport, which is simply the movement of materials in and out of the cell. And this, of course, happens through the use of the cell membrane. We learned that the cell membrane is the organelle which controls the movement of materials in and out of the cell, and today we're going to talk about how that happens. So the cell membrane is also known as the plasma membrane, and it's basically this double-layered boundary um, that surrounds the cell and is very fluid and flexible and allows some materials to travel in and out of it. So we call it selectively permeable because it only allows certain materials in and out of the cell. So it takes good things in and lets bad things out. And by good things, I mean things that the cell needs, or bad things, I mean that things that the cell wants to get rid of. <clears throat> so like I said, this is a double layer, and it's, it's a double phospholipid layer. So we call it a phospholipid bilayer. And basically, it means that you have two layers of these phospholipid structures, and the Part of a phospholipid, the parts of a phospholipid lipid are the heads and the tails. And the heads are what we call hydrophilic, meaning they are water loving. The heads of the phospholipid bilayer are attracted to water. The tails of the phospholipid bilayer, this is the lipid portion, they are hydrophobic, which means they repel water. So by having portions of the cell membrane that are attracted to water and portions that repel water, this allows for the movement of materials in and out of the cell. This fluid mosaic model simply states that um, materials such as proteins, cholesterol, and carbohydrates are sort of able to float within the membrane, and they all have different jobs to do, and we've talked about some of those jobs, like cholesterol is there to prevent the fatty acid tails from sticking together, the proteins are there for materials to travel through, and then the cholesterol is there to transmit signals, letting the cell know what it has come in contact with. So how exactly do materials move in and out of the cell through the cell membrane? Well, those little phospholipids are constantly sort of vibrating against one another, and those vibrations create little openings in between the phospholipid bilayers. So materials can simply slide through in or out of the cell depending on what they need to do. So extracellular space, this means outside the, outside the cell. Intracellular space means inside the cell. So these molecules are simply able to diffuse right across the cell membrane until they reach a state of dynamic equilibrium, which they have over here. Okay, so there are two types of cellular transport. Transport that is passive and transport that is active. Passive transport occurs without the use of energy, and active transport requires energy. So remember when we talked about our cell transport mountain? Passive transport is going down the mountain. This is what's easy for us, going from high to low. This, that would be passive transport. This is what particles want to do. So there are three types of passive transport, diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. And all of these are going to be molecules traveling, traveling from high to low without the use of energy. This is with the concentration gradient. So diffusion is that movement of any particles from high to low without the use of energy along the concentration gradient. This could be perfume, it could be um, water, it could be food coloring, it could be any type of, of particles going from high to low without the use of energy. That is simple diffusion. Okay, diffusion is controlled by temperature, pressure, concentration. By changing all of those things, we're going to be able to change um, the amount of materials that are able to diffuse and at what rate. And then materials are always going to diffuse from high to low until they reach a state of dynamic equilibrium. And dynamic equilibrium is simply when those molecules have spread out as much as they can. Okay, so here's diffusion happening in a cell, this is the outside of the cell, this is the inside of the cell. You can see these little green molecules, whatever those may be. They're just sort of squeezing through the phospholipid bilayer from an uh, area where they're at high concentration to an area of lower concentration. Okay, facilitated diffusion. This is still diffusion, so it's still high to low, still passive transport without the use of energy. It's just happening with the use of helper proteins. So it's movement of materials across the cell membrane using protein channels. So here's a channel protein, here's a carrier protein. And you can see those materials are still moving from high to low. This time we're talking about these bigger pink molecules. Maybe this is glucose. Okay, they can't quite squeeze through the phospholipid layer, so they have to travel through these helper proteins. 
That's facilitated diffusion. The last type of passive transport is osmosis, which is diffusion. It's just a very specific type of diffusion. It's the diffusion of water. So osmosis is the diffusion of water across the selectively permeable membrane. In our case, we're talking about the cell membrane. There are three types of solutions when you're talking about os osmosis, so osmotic solutions or osmotic conditions, isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic. An isotonic solution is where you have equal amounts of water. When a cell is placed into this type of solution, you have equal amounts of water traveling both in and out of the cell. So the cell is in a very happy place. Water is moving in and out at the same rate. It's not going to shrink. It's not going to explode. It's just going to be very comfortable. So this would be when a cell is placed into an isotonic condition. So water is equal outside and inside. Solute is equal outside and inside. When a cell is placed into a hypotonic solution, it means it is being put into a, sol a solution where the solute concentration is higher inside the cell than it is outside the cell. So look at our picture here. The solute are these little orange particles. The water are the blue part particles. So we have lots of solute inside the cell, very little solute outside the cell. So if we have lots of solute inside, that means we have very little water inside. If we have little solute outside, that means we have lots of water outside. So water is going to travel from outside to inside, from high outside the cell to low inside the cell. So if we're taking in lots of water in a hypotonic solution, the cell is going to expand. And like a blood cell, for example, placed into pure distilled water will actually take in so much water that it will explode. Okay, so here's your little trick on how to remember this. If the cell gets as big as a hippo, that means it was placed in a hypotonic solution. Big as a hippo in a hypotonic solution. If a cell is placed into a hypertonic solution, that means it's being put into a solution where the solute concentration is higher outside the cell than it is inside. So if the solute concentration is high outside, that means the water concentration is low. If the solute concentration is low inside, that means the water concentration is high. So it's the water concentration is high inside, low outside, which means it's going to go from high to low, so it's going to leave inside the cell and travel to the outside, which means the cell is going to shrink. So water leaves the cell, goes to the solution, the water, the cell shrivels up, and that is because it is in a hypertonic solution. So here's your little trick to remember this. Someone who is hyper, crazy all the time, they're gonna be really skinny, right? Because they're running around. So hyper, nice and skinny. Big as a hippo in a hypotonic solution. Okay, so this cell in solution number one, you can see that it has shriveled up here. What type of solution is that cell in? Shriveled up in a hypertonic solution. This cell here has taken in so much water that it is actually bursting. So what type of solution was it placed in? Hypotonic solution. And then this cell here, it's taking in equal amounts of water both in and out, so it's very happy. That's because it was placed into what type of solution? Isotonic. Very good. Okay, so you can see here just looking at um, solution and how that affects tonicity. So hypertonic, isotonic, hypotonic, and the different amounts of solute. Okay, so those were our three forms of passive transport, simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. Now we're going to talk about active transport. So this is climbing cell transport mountain. Remember, climbing the mountain takes lots of energy. That's because you're traveling from low to high. This is not what molecules want to do. That's called moving against the gradient or swimming upstream, right? So this takes energy. So active transport requires energy. The movement of particles across the cell membrane using energy because molecules are going against the concentration gradient from low to high. So you can see here we have a solute particle that's in an area where there is very little, so it's low, and we're pushing it into the cell for one reason or another um, to an area where it is high. Maybe this is some type of food particle. So we're going to do that with the use of energy. 
Okay, there are two types of active transport, endocytosis and exocytosis. Endocytosis is when you take a, a large particle into the cell, endo into, and exocytosis is when you have the secretion of particles outside of the cell, so exo exiting. So here's the outside of the cell, something bumps into the cell membrane and the cell membrane wants to take it in despite the fact that it's going from low to high. So with the use of energy, it sort of wraps the membrane around that particle and brings it in in a little vesicle. Okay, exocytosis is the opposite. You have the vesicle which makes its way up to the membrane from the inside of the cell and then with the use of energy, we release those particles outside. Okay, so that is cell transport, the movement of materials in and out of the cell through the use of the very important structure, the cell membrane. I hope this helps.